It's the first round of the Iowa State High School football playoffs. And here in Emmitsburg, a small town in northwest Iowa, the high school team known as the Ehawks is taking it on the chin. The rain, which farmers around here could have used a few months earlier, is making things worse. Part-time assistant coach Bruce Nelson brings a little bit of experience to the job. He was a star football player here at this same school, then walked on at the University of Iowa, where he went on to become an All-American before being drafted in the second round by the NFL's Carolina Panthers. Injuries shortened his career, so he came home to the family biz, raising corn, and then started a brand new business. Bailing corn stover that leftover residue in the field after the corn is harvested. Used to be it was either left there and plowed back into the field before the next planting, or was baled up for livestock feed and bedding. But now there's a new use for it, making biofuel, specifically ethanol. So why don't you tell somebody about why corn stover is a good thing? Because there's a, a vast abundance of it. It's renewable, we can grow this every year. You know, we're gonna do it anyways, right? We've been doing this for you know, hundreds of years growing crops. We grow this crop every year, so this stover is going to be here. And so we might as well process it and make something even more useful out of it. When you think about ethanol, you think about ethanol from corn. That's the primary crop that we use here. Cellulosic ethanol uses different kinds of biomass as a feedstock for ethanol. So in our case, we're going to be using crop residue, corn cobs, husk, some stalk. Poet, one of the largest ethanol producers in the country, has teamed up with a Dutch biotech company, DSM, in a unique venture called Project Liberty. Next door to the corn ethanol plant is their new cellulosic ethanol plant under construction, expected to start operations in 2014. One of the challenges in getting cellulosic ethanol is, is your feedstock. You need a lot of it here at the plant. We're going to be processing 770 tons of biomass per day. And so how, how do you get that much material into a plant? Well, with our process with Stover and Ag Residue, the unique thing about that is that it's already being grown. Being grown, yes, but for farmers to make it profitable, they need more efficient methods for that second harvest, collecting the Stover. That's where Eric Woodford and his invention come in. This is called the powered wind guard. So this is the part that I invented and have a patent on. So these impeller blades spin and help drive the top of the windrow into the baler. So it helps the farmer get more yield and it helps him harvest the yield faster. We're going to use a lot less fuel because we'll be able to harvest more tons in less time. So then we're using less diesel fuel through the tractor so that reduces our carbon footprint. This method of harvesting really is key to sustainability because if you look out across this field, there's still a lot of residue out here. So as far as wind and water erosion, that's um, not going to be an issue here. So we're, we're really particular on how we harvest so that we're not going to have a, a devastating effect on the soil. There's really a snowball effect to this whole thing. I mean, you got the Eric Woodfords who are, you know, they created a dealership. Those guys have a lot of jobs. They have going there to keep this equipment going, and, and the guys like me, we buy the equipment. We're we're making money using their equipment as well. And... For relatively young men like Bruce and Eric, this is not only a way to breathe life into rural economies. For them, it's also the right thing to do. My wife and I made the decision that we would sell our farm and sell our baling business and and move to Iowa because we wanted to lead by example to show our children. You know, mom and dad are going to do something to be involved in a clean energy future. Because I don't want to do something bad. You know, you don't want to start a business based on people, you know, you're hurting the earth or you're putting people out of jobs. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of bad things about this. And this former football player who saw his team at Iowa progress from a losing 1 in 10 record in his freshman year to 11 in 2 in his senior year says it's a lot like his bailing business. We stunk at the beginning. We were one in 10 my first year. We were bailing up bad bales. We were putting them in the wrong spot. We were hauling them the wrong way. We were doing everything the hard way. And we were working hard. We worked really hard when we were one in 10 in football. And I worked really, really hard that year in bailing. And nothing came to fruition, you know what I'm saying? And this year, 
He's hoping his bailing business goes 11 and 2. So next year you go undefeated? Well, and then my, my uh, that's funny you say that because my rookie year in the NFL, we went to the Super Bowl. So I'm thinking next year we're going to the Super Bowl, baby. <laughs> Super Bowl or bust. And the same might also be said of this very young cellulosic ethanol industry. A few rookie mistakes along the way, but shooting for the Super Bowl of a sustainable energy future.